All right, all right. Story number three, story number three. You know, Lauren Hill, man, you know, I, the Fuji is one of my favorite groups of all time. One of my favorite groups of all time. The score, to me, Lauren, Lauren Hill's rapping on the score is one of the best rapping performances in rap history from anybody. Anybody. And I'm just talking about the rapping performance. This is away from her singing. This is away from her songwriting. Even just how she was rapping, right? Uh, Miseducation of Lauryn Hill, obviously, that's one of the most champion, celebrated albums in hip-hop history. Hip-hop history. You can't take anything away from that album. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people who liked her Unplugged album. There's a lot of people who really appreciated, you know, Mystery of Iniquity and everything that she was doing on that project. Um, and for the most part, sadly, that's... That's been the majority of what we've been able to receive from her as an artist throughout her career. Uh, and on the other side of things, I can't tell you, I don't think I've ever been to a good Lauryn Hill performance. I don't think I have. You know, and I think there's a couple of reasons for that. One, she, was, she lost a lawsuit to a number of writers on, for miseducation of Lauryn Hill because she presented that project as if she was the sole writer, producer, executive producer on that album. When she actually had help, she actually worked with other people to make that project, right? So one of the stipulations from that lawsuit, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, was that she can't play the actual album versions of her songs live. Like legally, she can't play the songs as they sound on the album. So she ends up playing these like sped up live renditions that at best are shadows of the songs that I personally loved. And it just, for me, has never hit the same way. I've seen her live maybe four times, right? And at the same time, every one of those four times, she was showed up crazy late, showed up crazy late. You know, and so it's really a shame how her career has gone as a fan, the fanager in me. Now, I'm not here to judge her and <laughs> her being herself. Clearly, this is her being herself, right? I think it's really messed up that she presented that album as if she was the sole writer, producer, everything on it. And she actually, you know, worked with other people and in a sense tried to steal from them. I think that is garbage. <laughs> I think that's terrible. Uh, but, you know, people make choices in life, and she's lived an incredible life. Now, she's had a pretty decent year. She, she won an Apple Award. I think she was the, the number one hip-hop artist in Hip Hop 50 or something like that. No disrespect. I can't remember what it is. But she definitely won an award. She's been coming outside more. I saw her at the BET Awards this year. She performed at the BET Awards. Um, you know, and she brought her son out. One of her sons performed. And I think Wyclef came out. Either way. So the Fugees were supposed to go on tour. It's supposed to be a big global tour. Uh, I think, you know, if you get it. Now, I say all that to say about Lauren Hill's performances, but I'd, I'd go see a Fuji show. She could play those songs. That would be great. And they were supposed to go on tour, but the tour collapsed. And so this was, this story broke today. This is Variety. It says, Lauren Hill is sued for fraud, breach of contract by Fuji's co-founder, Praz. Michelle. So Praz is suing Lauren Hill. And over the past couple of weeks, I think we probably saw this coming. Lauren, I mean, Praz, there was a made a, he released a track that many took as a diss track to Lauren Hill. He did an interview saying it wasn't necessarily a diss track, but you know, I think a lot of times people can read between the lines. Uh, but let's see what this, this story says here, because Praz has another crazy court case that he's been embroiled in for the past six, seven years. Uh, this article will touch on that. I've also covered that on this channel, so I'll put a link to it in the description. But let's see what Praz is saying here. Praz Michelle, founding member of Grammy-winning hip-hop group The Fugees, is suing his bandmate Lauryn Hill in federal court for fraud and breach of contract, among other claims, over their abbreviated 2023 and canceled tour of uh, a year later. In a scathing lawsuit filed Tuesday in the Southern District of New York, Michelle alleges that Hill grossly mismanaged the setup, marketing, and budgeting of their Scuttle 2023 tour, which was actually a veiled and devious attempt to make a big score for herself. 
The complaint states, and adding that the singer then secretly siphoned off money from tour guarantees. The full list of claims include fraud, fraud in the indictment, breach of fiduciary duty, breach of contract, accounting, and refusal to permit an audit of the Fuji's tour. All right, so that's the setup. Look at some of the stuff that this, this, this suit is alleging, though. I mean, Praz is very upset. The suit claims that the, the 2023 Fuji's tour should have been a huge commercial success since most of the shows for the entire arena-sized tour were sold out in advance. However, Michelle came away, Praz came away empty-handed because Hill controlled the tour budget that was so bloated with unnecessary and most likely fictitious expenses that it seemed designed to lose money. Furthermore, the tour was cut short when Hill abruptly and unilaterally canceled the second half in November 2023, citing serious vocal strain. The lawsuit, which paints Hill as a wolf in sheep's clothing with narcissistic tendencies, offers up juicy anecdotes, including one involving her turning down a $5 million offer for the Fugees to perform at Coachella this year over feeling snubbed by the festival, putting no doubt at the top of the bill. Now, that's a crazy allegation, but she turned down $5 million because no doubt sat on top of the bill. There's a lot of stories that have been done over Lauren, about Lauren Hill over a long period of time, and they do allege that she has narcissistic tendencies. I can't speak to the truth of that at all. I do think if you were watching a pattern of someone you get, you know, people pay a, tons of money to go see live, and they consistently show up late for <laughs> over a two-decade period, perhaps that adds up to narcissistic tendencies, but... Nevertheless, <laughs> no doubt, man, no doubt. They show up on time. They got big hits. They were big at the same time the Fugees were. I'm just a girl. Dun, 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 dun. One second applause. Hill's arrogance was again demonstrated when she unilaterally rejected a $5 million offer to play Coachella. The reason was that her ego was bruised since the group, no doubt, would be receiving top billing over the Fugees the night of their show. The complaint says Hill never told Praz about the offer or that she had rejected it. Praz only learned about it when it was too late. After Hill, in an astonishing display of hubris, asked Praz if he would agree to perform a few Fuji songs for free as the opening act for her son, YG Marley, who was slated to perform at the same Coachella festival. YG, I believe, is he performed at the BET Awards this year, too. Very talented, very talented son. The group, which was full, but can you imagine that? Yo, I'm sorry, yo, you know, I know I turned down that Coachella thing. I'm sorry the way you found out, but yo, can you just, you know what I'm saying? Can you do a solid for my son? <laughs> Let me stop your money and then launder your reputation. Oh my gosh. Uh, the group was formed with Wyclef Jean in the 1980s in South Orange, New Jersey, represent, is often dubbed one of the most influential hip hop acts of the 1990s, selling more than 22 million records globally. The score, which was released in 1996 and marked their final album, was certi certified seven times platinum by the RIAA. That's another album I have on my wall. I have that album on my wall. That was a good year. Was that the same? Yeah. I was bumping East 99 Eternal and Fuji's The Score. I mean, those are like my go-to CDs back then. According to the complaint, Hill, reeling from a failed solo tour, first proposed the idea of a Fuji reunion in spring 2023 to Wyclef Jean, who then pitched it to Praz. She realized that the only chance for her to perform at arena-sized venues and feed her insatiable ego would be to reunite with Praz and Wyclef and build the 25th anniversary tour as a Fuji's tour that suit the suit states. Hill exploited Praz's... Okay. Now, this is the part that talks about Praza's situation, which he has one of the wildest court cases. I mean, the Fugees, when they do stuff, they do, big. they do it big. They do it big when they do things, I tell you, man. I mean, John Forte, he's one of the refugees, incredibly talented. He got arrested for smuggling liquid cocaine, went to federal, was convicted, was in federal prison, and then was pardoned by President George W. Bush. <laughs> it's still one of the craziest stories. And Praza's story, his legal situation, it's, it supersedes that. 
And so this is going to touch on that, uh, <laughs> on Praz's situation. Hill exploited Praz's precarious situation in which he needed money for mounting legal fees, the complaint contends. At the time, Praz was in the middle of a four-year legal battle with the U.S. Department of Justice after being named as co-defendant of Wolf of Wall Street financier Joe Lowe, who, alleged, who allegedly stole $4.5 billion from Malaysia's sovereign wealth fund, known as 1MDB, in one of the world's largest financial scandals ever, ever. Okay, so I've, in this case, there's a, again, I have a video on this channel about it. I think I talk about it on the All Out Show with Rude Drew, but in this case, Joe Lowe was hitting up celebrities trying to get close to Obama, right? So he and Praz became friends at some point in time. And a lot of times when you have these political events, I mean, it's $50,000 a table, $100,000 a table, whatever. So, you know, he would basically give money to Praz, allegedly, to book certain, to attend certain events. And he would spend all kinds of crazy money on all kinds of celebrities. There's one story in there. <laughs> There's one, what, how'd this story go? There's a story in there that alleges that one night they were at a club and uh, a bartender wouldn't serve him. I'm getting this wrong. I'm getting this wrong. But a bartender wouldn't serve him. So he went across the street and bought out the entire club across the street and invited everybody in that club over to the other club for free drinks. And I think it took place in, in uh, Tribeca if I'm not, or Meatpacking District, if I'm not mistaken. It's, it's crazy stuff like that. But Praz <laughs> is in the middle of this case, right? So that's how big, that's how much money this dude Joe Lowe was, was allegedly stealing from the Malaysia Sovereign Wealth Fund. While Lowe remains on the run and is believed to be living in China where he evades justice, Praz was convicted in April 2023, including for violations of the Foreign Agents Registration Act and acting as an agent of China. Praz was never accused of participating in epic theft that was used to finance lavish Hollywood parties that cost eight figures a pop and drew the likes of Leonardo DiCaprio and Paris Hilton. Right. But the 2023 Fuji's tour, which was canceled abruptly by Hill, did little to help Praz cover his legal bills and left him owing nearly one million in unrecouped expenses because Hill allegedly was taking 40 percent of the tour guarantees and tour net profits off the top for herself, leaving the remaining 60 percent to be split equally between Hill, Praz and Wyclef, the suit states. Now, that's crazy. That's crazy. If she did that, she took 40 percent off top, allegedly. And then still split the remaining 60 was a part of that split. Oh, my gosh. I hate I hate the fact that one of my favorite groups of all time has been going basically through this in one way or the other for the past 25 years. It's really heartbreaking. Praz and his representatives only learned of that setup this year. Earlier this year, Hill allegedly entered into a new agreement with Live Nation for an 18-show Fuji's U.S. tour scheduled to kick off in August 2024. She never disclosed the agreement to Praz, according to the suit. Ticket sales were dismal, when, which Praz blames on Hill because she had taken far too long to close the deal with Live Nation, and there was little or no marketing for the tour and not enough time between announcement and the first concert date to do sufficient advanced sales to justify the tour. As a result... Live Nation pulled the plug on the U.S. tour in August, prompting speculation about what really torpedoed the highly anticipated tour. At the time, Hill blamed the media. She released a statement that said, Last year I faced an injury that necessitated the rescheduling of some, some of my shows. Regrettably, some media outlets penchant for sensationalism and clickbait headlines have seemingly created a narrative that has affected ticket sales for the North American portion of the tour. The suit also claims that Hill has tarnished the Fuji's brand due to her habit of showing up late for shows, sometimes as many as two to three hours. Hill, this, this, this next line here, I saw a headline on this this week too. Hill has continued to draw fan complaints for her chronic tardiness. Just this week, the singer reportedly hit the stage more than four hours late <laughs> for a show in Nairobi, Kenya. Four hours late. The Fugees aren't the only musical act currently ensnared by legal infighting. Hall and Oates founders Daryl Hall and John Oates have been battling it out in, con in confidential arbitration over the sale of their business partnership. But this is a Variety exclusive. They've, they've published this today. 
Uh, so we have Pra suing Lauren uh, for uh, for breach of contract, fraud, and a number of other things. I again, this really breaks my heart. I if if one, they're from Newark, <laughs> White Cloud's from Newark. Um, the story, the video I do with my mom really talks about talks about this. Um, and uh, so there's a connection there. But two, they're just a great example to me of like the power of the black diaspora in music. You know, you've got Haitians and, you know, Americans and rap and Caribbean music and just, you know, global thinking delivered through, you know, through impeccable rhymes, you know, that they've made, mu all three of them truthfully have made music that will stand the test of time. And, you know, it's been 25 plus years since we've really seen them be able to put on the type of show we know that they truly are capable of. They crafted so many amazing things together and it's really disappointing to me to see that has come to this. But let me know what you guys think about all this. My name is Justin Hunt. Like, subscribe to the channel, fly at the company man on everything. It's all happening. Justin Hunt is here, it's all happening. Justin Hunt is here, it's all happening. The mathematical breakdown of this mighty game of rap we in. It's boom bapping in. Systematical culture views us radical, it's all happening. Shaking hands and dapping in. Life through the lens of hip hop from trip hop to yes, yes, dog, you don't stop, you don't, you don't stop, stop. Justin Hunt is here, it's all happening. It's all happening, yes, it's all happening. Justin Hunt is here, it's all happening. It's all happening, yes, it's all happening.